votes on the 26th of this month, Friday. If you're a citizen, a resident of the city, please go out and cast your franchise. That is the most important right that we have as citizens in a democracy. Joining me here on this panel, a full-fledged political panel, and I'm glad to have, we have the, the gender ratio on the panel is skewed three is to one in favor of the women. So let me start from the right. Uh, Brijesh Kallapa, senior advocate, is joining us on the panel. Ashwarya Mahadev is spokesperson of the Congress Party. Surbi Hodigere, spokesperson of the BJP, and Preeti Subhash is spokesperson of the JDS. And we have a lovely audience of youngsters, students of the St. Joseph's Institution, who will be asking our panel some hard-hitting questions as well. But let's, at the outset, define what this election is all about. The one word you hear out on the campaign trail is guarantee, whether it is the Congress's guarantees or whether it is Modi key guarantee. So let me ask the political spokespersons to lay out what is the overarching issue in this election. Let me start with Aishwarya Mahadev. The Congress's five guarantees. The BJP says these are freebies, these are ravedies, it doesn't work. You're only adding 50 odd thousand crores to the state budget. Uh, how are you going to sustain this? Good evening, Zaka. The funny situation is when in Karnataka an opposition party offers guarantees for social justice and upliftment, the BJP says Ravdi. But in Madhya Pradesh, when they offer the same as Ladli Baina, apparently that is for social justice and not a Ravdi. Let's make certain things very clear and certain parameters very clear. A lot of people here in the audience have a certain amount of agency and a certain amount of independence that they do not need the sort of social value welfare that states offer them. Just because they do not need it, to dismiss it is extremely disrespectful to the large section of society who beneficiaries today. The Chief Minister has clarified close to five, uh, clo close to five crore people are beneficiaries of this and the Congress government has seen, you know, with all the, the guarantees are bad and what not, the budget size is still grown. Fiscal responsibility is within the act at 2.95 percent and forecasts are going to tell you because you you're putting money in the hands of people at a time of inflation being at a nine year high, you're going to see the budget increase more and next year but how you're are going you going to, see to far sustain more money. it? Actually, how are you uh, going to sustain second. it? It's fifty two thousand crores. The state is revenue deficit at twenty five or twenty six thousand crores. How are you going to sustain this over a period of five years? I believe necessarily the budget is expanding and also let's also talk about the fiscal uh, the fiscal deficit nationally is phenomenally high compared to what it is in Karnataka. One, we are an expanding economy. Second, we believe it's a cyclical impact where we put money into the hands of the largest chunk of because they're not, they may not be direct taxpayers, Zaka, but they still are consumers and they basically add to development and you see that's how you move out of an inflation and lastly okay. we have a chief minister here who has assured us of a framework where we will ensure each and every one of our guarantees are sustainable. If you do not believe us, Nirmala Sitaraman came and said Bangalore is one of the highest when it comes to tax and also collection of tax and also development. So if she's given us that guarantee, I'm very sure I have enough money okay. for the so next five to ten when, years. When the Congress this. and Sudramaya's government gives guarantees, you guys call it Ravdi and Freebie and so on. When you give Ladli Behna, that's the same thing, right? First of all, Zaka, uh, really happy to be at the Old Boys College of Joseph's and have an overwhelming number of women on uh, on the stage, probably a, a misnomer in this university in itself, but happy to be here. Secondly, I just want to start off with this uh, confusion in my head. We're entering into a Lok Sabha election. While I do respect the fact that there are certain state issues that will matter. I would have expected you to ask about the Congress manifesto and the Nyai guarantees or whatever that is being called no, at but this point. Your manifesto also says Modi ki guarantee. May I? May I? Yeah. yeah. So whether the Karnataka elections are going to be fought on the guarantees and on the mandate of the Sidramaya government is one thing. This is a national level election that requires us to think about issues that are relevant nationally as well. No, no, so please explain to our viewers what does Modi ki guarantee mean? It's on the, it's on the very first page of your manifesto. What, what is Modi ki guarantee? First of all, I'll say this unhinged. Yes, the guarantee term in 23 election here in Karnataka. I come from a very agile organization. If we see a good idea, we don't shy away from it. We pick it up and we make it our own. And that is what the Modi guarantee one has done in terms of PR and advertising. Second, what is the Modi ki guarantee. This concept of ravedi, freebies, socialism, this is not alien to our country. 
inherently fundamentally we have had a large chunk of population that has been dependent on the state in order to go uh, uh, grow economically and in order to achieve economic mobility that is not to say that there is only one path the path that was required in, two, uh, in 1947 versus the path that will be required and will be set in place in 2047 is a very different one yes we need to ensure that there is economic mobility and people are pulled out of that cyclical poverty crisis that exists we are a developing country but garibi hatao slogans that went for indira gandhi do not work today as well 1991 had reforms that allowed for more market players to come into play now what is the modi ki guarantee the modi ki guarantee is 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 put into a crux through the surya ghar scheme for example i'll tell you the difference you ask me the difference right is that it is targeted it is pushed towards behavioral change if you install solar panels in your house i give you x amount of subsidy and therefore you are contributing productively to the economy as well as i am ensuring that there is some amount of benefit that you get from it okay. the distinct difference is that the congress continues to in its path and this is very visible through its manifesto that uh, rahul gandhi has also constantly spoken about which is that uh, you know there is that aspect of populism whereas the bjp is manifesto and policy approach in this election okay. is about so it's about implementation future. and not about uh, populism but That's let me ask yeah, let me that let me that is not what i said no, you said populism no. versus implementation i said right? populism versus futuristic thinking of working together and taking the country to okay. next level let me ask brijesh kalapa what according to you brijesh you've been in all sides of the political divide not <laughs> so all sides. Not you're all sides. A, 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 now you're an independent yeah. citizen of uh, bengaluru what what is at stake at this election surbi odigere and the bjp say the very the, the very future of our country for the next 25 years is at stake it's about making viksit bharat ashura mahadev and her party say our democracy is at stake if if uh, this election bjp and modi win we won't have any elections anymore what is at stake in this election see uh, i'm as a political observer let me answer this question uh, there was a minister in the upa by the name of krishna tirath and she subsequently i think joined the bjp and uh, she said something very interesting she said that after 10 years in power why was the upa voted out of power that when you enter a house and when you see a sofa when you see your curtains you feel they all need to be changed <laughs> right so this is essentially anti incumbency right okay. so i think as far as these elections are concerned nobody is speaking of anti incumbency it's a 10 year anti incumbency one two is in so far as the guarantees are concerned i can tell you as far as karnataka is concerned women are benefiting are benefiting are benefiting definitely okay for this reason that let's assume there is a woman who works in a garment factory hmm. husband is a drunkard right she gets 2000 rupees then she travels free bus free bus there she saves some money hmm. so she is able to bring vegetables home rice is given electricity bills are not taken from her so it's it's a big saving so I, as far to the best of my understanding women are very trustworthy voters i think in my reading in my you know sense of talking to people and so on and so forth when the elections began the congress party was at 3 or 4 today where elections are still far away substantially i think from what i hear on the streets it's increased to 8 to 9 okay and momentum appears to be in favor of the congress party for this reason that the bjp hasn't gotten its act together okay. whether it's in shimoga or in hubli darwar they haven't got their act together okay i'll 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 get to those in in one second but surbi please respond uh, brijesh saying that uh, and and you know to be fair to him he's neither with your party nor with the congress he's a independent political observer now he's been everywhere and he's realized the best place to be is to be independent political observer he says you haven't got your act together uh, when this election started momentum was with you but now the momentum seems to be shifting to the congress that's his argument he's fair to have that opinion and uh, I don't know how to rebut that, given that the Prime Minister's roadshow, both in uh, Mangaluru as well as Mysore, saw an overwhelming response in favour of the BJP. The differences he speaks with in our party is uh, is a 
it's a natural phenomenon that happens when there are x number of aspirants which is unlike in the congress party where ministers refuse to contest and their da so sons daughters aunts nephews in laws were requested to contest right so it was a problem of plenty that we had and it's good we like opportunity we like competitiveness okay so let me ask please i just can yeah. i make a point on the women voters absolutely sir as somebody sitting here uh, you know a woman really vocally supportive of more women in leadership as well as in political processes i do believe that the women's vote is finally coming of age mm -hmm. uh, we saw this in 2019 women in chunk supported the prime minister a lot because of uh, the schemes that he was able to provide the time poverty that women face the the lowest of the maslow's hierarchy is on economic benefit and the time poverty women faced was on the matters of cooking was on matters of um, you know making sure that their children have good education okay. these were solved for and now we have gotten a cherry on top of the cake which is the 33% reservation that allows people like me who come from zero background to be able to uh, you know aspire for public office the women's vote okay. is strongly behind the prime minister so let me ask uh, priti subhash of the jds somebody refer instead about uh, you know dynastic politics i'm sorry to say this but in this election i believe mr kumar swami is contesting from uh, one seat uh, i believe his uh, nephew is contesting from one seat uh, his brother in law is contesting from another seat i mean how do you go to the people and talk about dynastic politics see dynasty polit uh, politics what uh, you're referring to so what about congress my question to everybody is what about congress who is uh, dk suresh who is uh, sidramaiah's son who is uh, jarki hole's daughter who is lakshmi hebalkar's uh, son so what about your dynasty politics this is what you were preaching about and always accusing uh, jds of uh, dynasty politics see this is people it's a ma you know mandate given by the people you know for jds all this while it's not the congress or the uh, you know other parties it's the people why the soil of the son of the soil it's not very easy to name you know people calling as a son of a soil it is very very difficult a person deve gauda who comes from a farmer's family he has seen each and every poverty uh, lines also and also the problem of the farmers who committed suicide for which you know he waived off the farmers loan you know and today but, some but of the farmers but tell me wh why why did you have to tie up with the bjp many are saying you Sir, know you in the last assembly election you got reduced to i think under 10% or a 9% vote share party JD, your okay. mlas also came down to single digits is this uh, a reason for survival are no. you tying up with the bjp because you don't want it cbi ed against your back so i will tell you if you see a look at the history you know after emergency you know what happened jay prakash narayan's movement if everyone knows we had this janta parivar and we all of us including ram krishna hegde and uh, deve gauda ji jh uh, patil they all were in same parivar so for uh, several reasons you know they parted ways but still we are same the jds and bjp um, uh, you know um, alliance is an uh, Uh, augmentation of uh, diverse ideology and uh, but we have the same uh, uh, intention towards the progressive but growth of the nation but your party jds stands for secular you're tied of up with course, the bjp you don't like see a contradiction in that we have a diverse ideology but the intention towards the progressive growth of the nation is the same surbi so, you don't find you don't find a contradiction in no. allying with a party that has the name secular in it i find it amusing that in 2024 we continue to have this debate about secularism which as you know in india what it's practiced is not the eurocentric understanding of secularism which is a separation of state and the uh, and church it is a secularism that i don't even know if we are fully comprehended let's decolonize ourselves this is the first time voters young voters in india and in bharat we have always had a seamless intermingling of what this uh, dharma of this land means and how it shapes our thinking and our institutions decolonize ourselves to understand this better and not go into these semantics no, no, of many, the word secular no but many many are saying your detractors are saying that you know the reason why mr modi and your party are asking for 400 seats is you want to remove the word secular from the constitution these are 
the Cong what your detractors are saying the congress party has had a lot of uh, experience in amending the con you know the constitution the amendment that exists in the constitution to allow it to change and it's a dynamic document whether the word secular is going to remain or re is going to be taken away is not up for conversation it is in the preamble there is a very clear judgment okay. on the keshwanand bharti uh, why, judgment why are, why are you then spreading kanads why are you spreading rumors nobody can change the constitution of this country the prime minister today that talked about it not what in I his said. no no the the, the prime Let's minister said samvidhan ko aise koi chhed nahi sakta those are the exact words that he used so then why are you you know scaring people why are you fear mongering zaka just a few responses and i hope you will indulge me on this because while i did hear the diatribe and the lecture on philosophy a few facts i don't need a definition of what secular is or jatiya tita is but the fact is yedurappa when he was chief minister in the vidhan sauda said there are no bigger opportunistic politicians that hd kumar swami and his father one nirmala sitaraman in 2011 turned around and said there is 1500 crores of corrupt money with the jds as recently mr vijendra has spoken about hd devegaoda the prime minister previously in his election had called them a b team of another political party so this is nothing more than political opportunism because on the jds side kumar swami has cried more than enough times to say you know he's been betrayed by the bjp and this starts from 2006 onwards right i, I do not i did not interrupt and i will complete what i'm going to say and then you can say what you have to second when you talk about this idea that modi's rallies had so many people nam kannada dali there's one saying madve godorala muhi hakala ha samavesh godorala vote hakala anta massive crowds are not an indicator of a vote the same way the bjp said it against tejasvi yadav in bihar that is the same indicator and last zaka you talk about modi's guarantee being the greatest reinforcer you ask me why it's I didn't say it. the bjp is yes, the bjp yes sorry don't, when don't she said no no i will not zaka and i won't say you misinterpreted me uh, because the bjp said you know it's a national election and what not today every election is being run as a prime minister modi election because he is not the star campaigner he is the beginning and the end of the bjp for them we saw what happened to the beginning and the end of prime minister modi in karnataka where they got trounced and modi's guarantee was okay. this i'm going to just complete i will not Quickly, i, I okay. need to open this up so, to the audience very also simple, yeah you know modi's guarantees from 2014 were 20 lakhs uh, 15 lakhs in your account two crore jobs doubling farmer income msp at a higher okay. rate implementation of different quick, reports quick, None None of those guarantees yeah, are quick, implemented. Quick response, My government has bought them. Guarantees. Our young audience, our young audience yeah. who wants to ask questions. Which is why we're going to elections right, Ashwarya, on yeah. them. Please yield. Yeah. May I get a quick word quick, and, quick, in quick, and then quick, Shanti yeah. can. I'm glad that uh, you know we brought up the alliance drama because there's one more alliance drama happening which is the Indi alliance. The Indi alliance when they were brought into play had a good number of parties. First the TMC left other parties followed and now you have a situation where Rahul Gandhi who first started contesting in Amethi the Gandhi bastion of Amethi left Amethi in 2019 ended up in uh, Kerala in Wayanad the reason I'm bringing this up for your information Aishwarya Mahadev is because the left in Wayanad has gone against Rahul Gandhi themselves contesting while there have been issues with the JDS BJP alliance we have had several samanvaya sabhas we have had very good meetings where we have discussed how is it that we bring these two diverse parties together okay. the congress party unfortunately does not know how to work with alliances because it has the big brotherly attitude with a grand old party okay. why should we work with regional parties Pra you have 15 no, no, you Prashanti. have 15 and then you have to go to the audience what you have to say no one second please What did yeah, you do with Nitin Shanti? You and I can go no, back no, no, and forth. Second, please, But the please. truth is that you have to let Prashanti get a word in. Let, let, let Prashanti get a word in. Then, then after that, the audience. Do you yeah. all know why India against corruption movement happened? Anna Hazare's movement. It's all because the scams by Congress, the 2G scam, the Bofa scam, the CWC scam. Don't interrupt. Yeah, and all these scams. Why? How much of money is being looted by Congress? You know, Anna Hazare and everything. No, no. One second, ma'am. Ma the reason why I'm talking you, about you corruption here is you are in alliance with the same party from 2018. Sir, sir. No, no. Which one? With Congress. So unfortunately, it's the greatest mistake ma which we have learned now after the Congress backstabbing us. Okay. You know, we've learned the mistake. Okay. Let and me let me let me go to sir. the audience. Oh, I'll come I'll come back oh, to you. The audience has been waiting. Thing, and then yeah. you can go to the audience. Mm. So the audience knows better. See, in uh, 2019. the congress party had an alliance with the jds yeah arithmetically there was no way the bjp could have gotten as many as 26 seats no okay. way okay so i'm only saying that arithmetic 
is different from chemistry. From chemistry. Okay. Let's let's get some questions from the audience here. Yeah. Uh, okay. The gentleman there in the blue shirt first. If uh, Ritu, my colleague, can pass a mic to him. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, my question is simple. Uh, out of the 125 countries in the World Hunger Index, India stands 111th in the 2023 index and 107th in the 2022 index, whereas neighboring countries such as uh, Nepal, Pakistan and China rank above India. So why are we still lacking? Is the current government unable to approach the people of our country or is it not trying also to improve the World Hunger Index? Because so, Surabhi, please respond. Why are we 100 and, what, what was it? 117th? 111. 111 of the World Hunger Index. I'm glad you asked this question. Can I know your name as well, please? Um, my name is Suhotra. Suhotra, thank you so much for asking this question. Not just the World Hunger Index, there's also the Democracy Index. I forgot what the name of it exactly was. There's a bunch of such indexes and somebody who has had the time to uh, live abroad as well as study how these organizations work and function, we have a crucial argument to bring up over here. In the World Democracy Index as well as the World Hunger Index, we rank behind Pakistan, whose economy is much smaller, whose uh, you know political situation is in crisis, growth rate is much lower. This has been brought up at the government level as well and otherwise too that there is a flaw in methodology and you and I can have a larger discussion post this debate. But that flaw in methodology is also very much against the global south. Countries from the global south have raised this in UN and other international forums. Um, and just as a word of from personal experience, what I have seen happen in prestigious institutions, research centers, is that, that western centric view on how things are measured. Uh, okay. There was recently a, a, a conversation on zero food children as well. Similar sort of issues coming from there too. I'm glad you raised this and keep raising it because we need to so question this. Let's have, let's have more uh, show of hands. Anybody else who wants to ask a question? Uh, yeah, let's go to the last row, the, the gentleman in the white shirt. Yeah. Hello, ma'am and hello, sir. Uh, I'm Prajwal TV and uh, my question is simple and it's addressed to everyone in the panel. Uh, the spokesperson from BJP had mentioned that we should be talking about national issues uh, because it's a national election. Uh, th this question is very simple. Do you think us as people who have witnessed uh, many things over the past 10 years, be it with the journalists, with wrestlers in Manipur, all across the country, uh, do you think we must be voting uh, for a government that put for puts forward the people first or the nation first? Surbi, I think is that, is that, is that question is directed to the BJP spokesperson? It's to everyone in the panel. Okay. Um, I'm glad I'm getting all the questions, you know. <laughs> You're in power. Guys. You should um, be getting the questions. Absolutely. Happy to take them on. Thank you for uh, reiterating that it's a national election and what does that essentially signify, right? We're selecting members of parliament who will represent us and our views when national issues are discussed, the union list is deliberated. Absolutely, uh, you mentioned a few incidents in the last couple of years. I know that uh, they're probably, uh, and you know, there are more such, not just issues, but also achievements we have uh, secured. What does it mean to be people's first versus nation first? I don't think that those are contradictory in any nature. The people are what make up the nation. So if those, uh, if that, what does it mean when the BJP says nation first, nation first? I want to bring in a foreign policy example. Just today we heard that uh, the US and UK are putting sanctions on Russia for uh, steel and metal because of their involvement in the Iran crisis as well as, you know, the ongoing conflict between US and Russia. And uh, while the policy of non-alignment served its cause in the Nehruvian age, we're in a very different world where it's not, uh, it's not a bipolar world, it's a multipolar world. And India okay. standing up for itself and saying that, look, I agree that there are global conflicts. I'm not saying war is good. But what I am saying is that I have a large chunk of people who are dependent on gas, who are dependent on steel manufacturing, uh, who okay. require these okay. things. Exactly. And therefore, Let, yeah. I will put yeah. nation first. Got that it. to me... Is nation Prash, first, Prash, class Prash, people Prash, Prashanti first. wants to make a point and then I'll, yes. I'll, I'll come uh, to Aishwarya. We, want we to also get, have to take a break, yeah. Yeah, we want to get back our land. Kachatevu oil land, it's gone to Sri Lanka. The Aksai chain has gone to China. And now uh, the Congress uh, opposed abrogation of 370 article. Why did they do? do, do they, uh, don't you think Kashmir is ours? 
Kashmir and Aksuchin and uh, Kachitivo Island. These are all ours. And that is why we have to safeguard our borders, which okay. is very important. And I think... Okay, I have to quickly take a break, but please respond, Ashwarya Mahadev. Aren't these the issues that matter in 2024? No, Kachitivo, Aksai Chin... <laughs> Um, Zaka for parties that talk about the future and 2040, whatever, they seem to be obsessed with 74. But more recently, in the past nine years, if you look at the number of, uh, let's say, encampments around Arunachal Pradesh and the fourth list of names um, that China has renamed of places in Arunachal, you'll realize what the foreign policy implications are. Lastly, I just have to, you know, I'm not going to talk about foreign policy. I'm going to make it very simple. Go back to the Constituent Assembly formation of the nation. What was the point of the House of the People? Every parliamentary every representative you sent to the parliament was not talking about the overall, they were talking about being representatives for the voters that have elected them. For example, Ivatu in Karnataka, how many BJP MPs do we have? How many of them have spoken about drought relief? How many of them have spoken about GST losses to my state? How many of them have spoken about from the 13th to the 14th to the 15th finance commission, devolution has massively fallen for a state no, no, that no, no, sends more second, money. One not the if, voice if, this, of the people. If, this, if this is a national election, people also have a right to know. Absolutely. On the, on, the, on the side of the BJP, everybody knows Mr. Modi is the prime ministerial face. Who is your prime ministerial face? My don't, prime, the people, one second. don't the people ha deserve to know? One second. The people, yes, all of them deserve an answer, I am sure. But besides the cult of personality of one man, I stand on the power of every single vote that is going to vote for a better India and not one character whose entire your persona no, is what, do okay. not ask me to define character for you. I meant a person, I didn't say caricature. There's a difference there. Okay. Right? So I've got to, that I'm going to take a, is the difference okay. I'm going to take a break. and this. I'm going to take a break, but when we come back, we'll try and, you know, br bring it down to some of the local issues because every election is local, every election is national. Even in national elections, there is the local and local elections, of course, there is the national. But the, the larger question is, how is Karnataka going to vote? Remember, this was one of the states where the BJP had a maximum number of seats, 25 out of 28. There was an independent MP they backed, so it was 26 out of 28 in 2019. Can they repeat that? Or as Rajesh suggested, is the Congress in the game? We'll take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. This is a live edition. We're bringing you election out from on the road from the beautiful city of Bengaluru. Back in two minutes. is hoping to make a difference is the woman card. This is the first meeting of the opposition India block of parties. Definitely a show of strength. Bhupendra Yadav is making his uh, Lok Sabha electoral debut. Murli Dharan's candidature has rejuvenated the Congress workers and they are confident of retaining this seat. This election of 2024 is one of the toughest political challenges that the Nath family will face. A lot of excitement here on ground. We are reporting from Bridge Key, Galia. It's an interesting fight. As usual in Tamil Nadu, the women outnumber the men. But we will focus on the first time voters. The assembly elections, the BJP and JDS fought against each other tooth and nail. But today, the party workers have to be under one pandal. Infrastructure Park. Viewers, what a beautiful moment you are getting to witness. An awe-inspiring spectacle, absolutely breathtaking. This is the Surya Tilak, the highlight of today's celebrations. It's an absolutely amazing sight to see. The rays of the sunlight kissing the forehead of Lord Ram. 
touching his forehead so delicately. Just take a look at this. This is just absolutely an amazing sight to watch. In fact, Ram Nami this year indeed does hold significance, uh, a lot of special significance for Ayodhya and thousands and lakhs of devotees worldwide as it marks the first celebration of Lord Ram's birth at the newly inaugurated Ram Mandir. And what a sight to watch, uh, to see the rays of the sun kissing and touching the forehead of Lord Ram. This is an unreal moment, in fact, a celestial moment and scientists ensuring uh, that this is done with utmost grandeur. In fact, the Ram Mandir in Ayodhya is set for the Surya Tilak. Everyone who is gathered there today in Ayodhya had been waiting uh, for this very, very precious moment. Just take a look at how the rays of the sun falling exactly at the forehead of Ram Mandir. A lot of work has been done to ensure uh, that this is done with utmost precision and grandeur. The, uh, the pundits doing the Aarti, 25 lakh devotees have gathered for this celestial event. It is absolutely fascinating. This is the first time Ram Nami is happening since the consecration of the Ram idol. Uh, the sun rays falling on the forehead of Ram Lalla in Ayodhya. And what a moment, especially for those uh, lakhs of devotees who have gathered to watch this once in a lifetime event. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, we are getting to see the rays of the sun falling on the forehead of Ram Lalla. This is called the Surya Tilak uh, of the deity. It is. It has been made possible with really elaborate uh, techniques and mechanisms. Uh, it involves mirrors and lenses. So everything has been done to ensure that this uh, is uh, possible with utmost precision. And we just were witness to this absolutely awe-inspiring spectacle when the rays of the sun touch the forehead of Ram Lalla. I think it's done now and uh, we are still seeing a little dot if I'm not mistaken. We can still see the dot of the uh, sun on the forehead of Ram Lalla. Devotees across the world in fact are celebrating Ram Naomi today. The birth of Lord Ram, one of the most revered deities uh, in Hinduism. And as we speak, as we are getting you these live images, we just got to witness that beautiful, that beautiful moment when the rays of the sun fell on the forehead of Ram Lalla. And as I just mentioned, uh, this is a scientific way of ensuring that the rays of the sun actually falls on the forehead of Lord Ram. Just take a look at the visuals there and lakhs of devotees who have gathered to witness this absolutely awe-inspiring uh, moment spectacle. Siddhant, my colleague, is one of the lucky ones today in Ayodhya. And Siddhant, uh, the highlight of today's celebrations is undoubtedly the Surya Tilak. What a breathtaking sight to see the rays of the sun falling on the forehead of Lord Ram. Right. And in fact, you know, Ram Navmi holds a lot of significance uh, for Ram Bhats. In fact, there is also this uh, ritual of uh, Saryu Snan. Uh, uh Welcome back to this special edition of Elections on the Road. We are coming to you live from Bengaluru tonight where there are national issues, there are local issues. One big talking point every election is about corruption. When the Congress was in opposition, they raised this whole thing about 40% Commission Sarkara, etc. That was a big talking point in the last Assembly election. This time, the Prime Minister is saying the reason why IT, ED, CBI, etc. are going out against uh, or the opposition is because that's where the maximum corruption is. But, Surbi Odigere, let me start with you first. This whole revelation from the electoral bonds. The opposition is saying that this is proof that Mr. Modi's government is corrupt. Rahul Gandhi today said that this is the biggest post-independence corruption scheme. It was devised by the Prime Minister himself. This is what Rahul Gandhi's contention is. Please respond. Why should the people of India not believe that you are using electoral bonds through corporate donations for quid pro quo? Um, before I get to that question, and I will, certainly, I want to respond to the mischaracterization of the Prime Minister. I don't know. There's a big difference between character and caricature. I'll probably have to check my English once. But nevertheless, the character of this person that we're talking about, the Prime Minister, born to a very, very humble family, is one who has raised up the ranks, 
not coming from any sort of special privileges and is today able to connect with the same level, 73 year old man able to connect to the same level with content creators as he is with Safai Karmacharis, is having conversations with gamers while he's also undersea diving in Dwarka. Whatever said and done, he's our Prime Minister, continues to be, and we will hold him in that regard for the respect of the office, number okay. one. The question I asked. Absolutely. With respect to electoral bonds, I do think that there is debate and conversation that continue to happen. Rahul Gandhi's charges are Rahul Gandhi's charges. But the truth of the matter is that if there were quid pro quo, the Congress, the DMK, which have always also benefited from these bonds, are also just as liable. Let's let law take its own course. And that uh, institution that needs to sort of oversee that is doing that. I just wanted to, because we spoke about the 26 uh, BJP MPs, I wanted to talk about how, you know, um, the Rameshwaram blast case happened not too far from here, um, the central constituency. The NIA that was brought in in Bengaluru was brought in by a BJP MP after much firefighting when the Congress said that this is not required, we don't have terrorism. Bengaluru specifically is a growing city. Otherwise, we wouldn't be sitting here at the heart of it with people from across the country. Uh, Bengaluru is a growing city and the threats are also growing, unfortunately. NIA was required. Similarly, I can go on and give you a bunch of achievements that have been done where the 25 MPs have gone and represented us. Now, the court conversation on devolution, I think, uh, you know, Everybody has gone through this in the last three months when the 15th Finance Commission was set up, which, might I say, was a const is a constitutional body. The representation and the, uh, the representation from the current chief minister, he was chief minister then as well, was lacking, which is why we are in this situation. A constitutional body where none of the MPs have anything to say. Okay. With respect to the GST no, no, Council, we, one, there is one a issue to fair another, to a third. representation one, one of let, let, federal let me, structure. Let me, stick, let me stick to the so issue of corruption once again, please. Run not going to go let me, let me ask ask the audience here, how many of you in this show of hands, how many of you in this audience think corruption is an issue in this election? That's a large majority, okay. How many of you think, put your hands down and I want another show, uh, round of hands. How many of you think electoral bonds are a vehicle of corruption, are an instrument of corruption? Okay, that's a fair number. Zaka, if I may respond. The idea of electoral bonds... No, but bond you also, you also benefited yeah, from I'm electoral bonds. You got 1,000 crores one plus. One second, understood, yes, which is a fraction of what they received. But, no, but the reality... Benefited. One second, let me complete, right? The fact of the matter remains that electoral bonds, when they were first bought in, we vociferously opposed it, saying this is something that will basically lead to un uh, factors of money going underground. But we also reluctantly agreed that in a democracy that funding is necessary, and if one party was receiving, we did not want to be left behind. The problematic... No, if you were so, part, one if you were second, so Zaka, opposed to it, no, if you were so opposed to it, you opposition. should have said, no, we won't take any money through electoral bonds. You know, principal opposition of that would have been absolutely fabulous, which is what we wanted to, but to level the playing field, especially because you keep seizing accounts and whatnot, but let me get to the point. The problematic part of electoral bonds is if you look at the sequence of donation to parties from one, entities that have never declared profit, which technically is a violation of company law there, and second, entities that wonderfully donated to particular political parties right after they were issued summons and show cause notices for either CBI or okay. ITED for violations under PMLA or the Le FEMA, right? That is is what is problematic. And second, you okay. talk about a personality of a person that speaks to gamers. You saw what they did with trying to kill the entire gaming economy that happened. You also think, see, understood the personality of a person may be absolutely wonderful. Does that make them the be-all and end-all of the nation? Okay. No. Let, we are let, a democracy let's, let's not, and let's not digress. Let me, let me go to Brajesh, please, on this. Brajesh, you know, I, I am of the firm view, and I was in Chennai last week, and I asked people again, an audience like this, is corruption an issue? And majority of them said no, because 2,000, some are giving 1,000, some are giving 500. So why is corruption an issue? And people are willing to pay, you're willing to pay your BBMP fellows, you're willing to pay your sewage board fellows to get your work done. This is how it has always been in this country. Zaka, as far as corruption is concerned, I agree with you that people actually, voters actually do take money, right? But... I also would like to tell you that the Teflon that Mr. Modi had before the electoral bonds issue came to light has been dented a bit because there clearly are charges of quid pro quo and it's visible. No, and but I even now, the personal allegations, there are no personal allegations against Mr. Modi. Personally, he is seen as above board. 
there may be allegations against his party against his government no, and so no, on no, but no, personally no, there no, are no allegations against him no i don't i'm i'm not saying that there are personal allegations sure. against mr modi i'm only saying that one the fact that he's heading the government to the fact that he very strongly argued for a electoral bonds plan scheme three the manner in which electoral bonds was tried to be stymied in court repeatedly not once twice three times four times so i think this is to some extent different okay. and i'm speaking Let, completely neutrally okay very quick response i need to go back to the audience for I more questions this, sure this audience might be a little young but i want to remind you of the pre 2014 era where things like money for ministerial posts through the radia tapes for example the scams that came out scam for everything for your case lalu prasad yadav india alliance member was so common that the whole concept of black money in politics was quintessential i'm not saying that uh, you know that the problem has in entirety gone away but we have not seen cases of high level corruption happen in the government and second you know the whole why is the prime minister's uh, uh, personality a big draw i feel very proud to go and uh, talk about the prime minister when i campaign because first and foremost having that kind of dedication is not something that uh, you can you know you just get every day it is a result of good amount of hard work whereas on the other hand a person like rahul gandhi who has been born into privilege who has had multiple chances at electoral victory and even today why is a mallikarjun karge not named as the prime ministerial face because just you know when when there is a uh, president uh, when there's a prime minister selection of course the gandhi family will need to have their place in why is the gandhi family not sort of uh, uh, backing away from this power center that they are in the congress okay. it's because of this firm Sorry ma'am okay. Zaka 10 seconds please one response she spoke about pre 2014 I'll tell you from last year one of my favorite politicians is somebody called Basraj Yatnal who went on stage figure out which party is from and he said CM aga ke eret saura koti beku so he basically went on stage to talk about his own party oh. leader one second you spoke about all those previous scams and basically said you need 2000 crores to become chief minister we've taken out Mr Yadurappa that's why Mr Bommai has come in but Mr Bommai won't come This, okay this i want to i want to i can go on who is the yeah, yeah. most richest candidate i want to move on i want to move on i want to who is the richest candidate in this election the, uh, the gentleman there okay one second one second one second, one second. Yeah, one second. One second. Yeah, one second. please one second. ask him let me let me go to the 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 young man in the white shirt We have a question. We have a question from the young man. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so my question is like, uh, even if uh, there's corruption now, there's corruption pre-2014, but uh, I don't see an acknowledgement from our leader, uh, like the leaders in today's time. Pre-2014, we used to have like we used to have those press conferences, which was kind of like a uh, like a mandatory thing for a prime minister of this nation. to address to the public as uh, the bjp spokesperson uh, pointed out uh, the prime minister um, has connected with the youth has connected with the people of this nation but i believe like uh, if he has to connect to the youth he has to address he has to acknowledge the youth uh, it it has been seen that um, the prime minister uh, the prime minister uh, has like said positives and has taken like uh, has uh, has done the progress but at the same time when it comes to negatives uh, we can see that the press conferences and the acknowledgments has not been made okay. so how do you Sorry. say about that um you mentioned that the prime minister can do better is that specifically to press conferences i think the mantra there and the style of politics also press conferences happen regularly in the party office in the from the government as well the prime minister has a habit and tendency to connect directly with young people which is why uh, these sort of conversations happen across different medium social media across different medium but i take your point and acknowledge okay it. let's get more questions in yeah the, the the gentleman in the red shirt and then the gentleman in the black shirt yeah uh some question is for the congress spokesperson so um recently it's, it's regarding the implementation of nep so uh, nep offers a uh, india centric education like for us and bjp wants to keep it whereas congress wants to modify it so how would you justify changing something that favors the students so like that's that's the only question i have yeah do you right. unequivocally believe that the nep is beneficial to students across the board south and north india so uh for me like in this state like where, where i'm living it it is benefit beneficial f- for me so yeah can you give me one example how 
So it offers a option between doing a three year undergrad course or doing a honors with a four year course. And and it's a national education Understood. policy. Yes. Why 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 are you changing it from state to state? One second. A lot of states, especially southern states, which have a large amount of respect for the linguistic diversity that come out. One second. It was the lack of consultation that happened with states as stakeholders. And third, we believe holistic education because no, no, the draft what, what, of the state saying, education no, no, policy is, saying, is coming that, up. That language is being imposed. I'm asking this audience. They are young students from St. Joseph's College. Is uh, language being being imposed Are on you. Are part of the NEP? Also? So I, I was having a conversation with the administrators. They have said that the state government has put the NEP on hold, and yeah. and one of the reasons is because of language. I want to Absolutely. ask your, uh, this audience: is, I, I, is language being imposed on you? Are you being forced to study a language that you don't want to? May I? You I don't see realize, it. Zaka, I, people are the shaking their heads. The implication of languages in first, second, and third language that we have has more of a ramification in primary and secondary school as opposed to college. One of the biggest oppositions we came up with is in state syllabus schools. Kannada is giving pr given primacy as it is in Tamil Nadu for Tamil, and then you see the same for Malayalam and Kerala. The biggest opposition was you did not make stakeholders, as in state governments, a part of the consultation to ensure equal weight of all languages. So then why are you blocking that in we, colleges one second, then? We basically it, it, colleges are have saying, nothing to do with language. One second, colleges as a whole, private or not, still receive a large amount of section and support and grants from the government, which believes it is the prerogative of the state, whether it comes to language or whether it comes to curriculum. Because if you look at the textbook row that happened in Karnataka, we were very firm on the fact that there are certain things that will not enter our textbook. If you look at what my state has done now, the state okay. education policy, we believe is more than at par with the national education policy so, and we believe so, it so will Rabi, be are you imposing and that Hindi, is what we're going to Why are you, uh, you know, forcing people to s study a third language? Why isn't Canada being given primacy? This is the charge against you by the opposition. The Congress had a good number of years to ensure that mother tongue-led education was made uh, policy. The NEP 2020 allows for everybody who studies in a particular land to learn the language of the land. I am a lover of my language, my Bhashe Kannada, and I had the option growing up to not study Kannada at all. I did study, but you could have taken English, Sanskrita, Hindi. Whereas with the NEP, everybody who studies in Karnataka in primary secondary education studies Kannada. That is the mother tongue. And let me tell you, it's not just about, you know, I spoke a little bit about decolonization. When we learn in our own language, the impact it has is an incredibly uh, different set. We should know our literature. We should know our uh, history. We should know its importance. Today I read Basavanna and I feel pride because I'm able to read his vachanas in the language he wrote it. So that focus not only on indigenous and mother tongue languages, but also on ideas that are indigenous okay. are incredibly important. Prash and that's Prashanti, what the NEP allows yeah. for. Ma while making us globally we'll relevant. Go back, we'll go back to the audience uh, so, question. Yeah. Uh, Quick point, see, please. why Britishers could not uh, destroy India, could not rule the entire India, it's because of the language barriers. Because of the language, the Britishers could only learn one language, that is Hindi. And if they, they could not destroy the entire south of India, they could not uh, destroy many temples, it's all because, you know, they could not understand the language. And language is very important if you want to be united. If your nation has to go front, you have to be... And if okay. you go to Tamil Nadu, do, they have Tamil as a language and they don't speak any other language. That is the importance that you give. Go to Germany, go to other uh, China. They have their language. They give so much of Can importance. You ask her okay. What language why not we, we speak in India? Why, why not Can we? Can you ask her Excuse or Paksha Mannin Maklantarala what language they we speak in all of India? No, they speak uh, Kannada, yeah. but you know what? No, let, we let have me, to give let me, let, me, let me go back to the audience, please. Yeah, the, the gentleman there in the, in the black shirt had a question, then we'll come to the front row here. Yeah, yeah, you also, yeah. So my question is directed towards the ruling party. Uh, basically, as a young Major voter, center. yeah, sorry, that side or this yeah, side, the, the, the ruling, ruling party, party at the center. center. <laughs> so basically, as a young voter, I am very much concerned about this country, about our country. I doubt that this country is moving towards plutocracy because you are not listening to the people's voice. When farmers try to raise their voice, you put barricaded around the state. 
So why you're not why you're not tolerating protest? My question is very straightforward because in democracy, protests are part of. Why, why are you an anti dissent party? Oh, that, that's a big one. Um, that's also, you know, very relevant to the ruling party in the state also. Right now, the protests that are allowed in Karnataka and Bengaluru are only restricted to Freedom Park, which is an absolute violation. You should be able to protest absolutely anywhere and everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, High Court, order. High Court order does have the you know, responsibility to take it up. So the High Court uh, said you can't protest anywhere no, else no, other no, than no, in Freedom no, Park? No, 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 no. This is why? the rule. One because second. You can only protest in Freedom Park. Why is that? Because of disruption of public because movement and also yeah. public good but okay. also the Karnataka government especially right when there was the whole controversy of the Middle East because of international relations being so important there was a peaceful march that was allowed through the streets specifically by the chief minister that said we will not okay. stop people's expression as long as it does okay. not resort Quickly, to violence. And I want to go back to the so the, it shouldn't be at the discretion of the executive if any protest is allowed all protests they're allowed to protest all, where they want. I'm sorry ma'am we have not gotten any We haven't such okay. our no, no, but answer the question that the young man asked are you I moving towards the blue you don't, you don't that's tolerate impossible. protest and dissent. In a country dissent. that's as diverse as our country, where languages are many, beliefs are many, and fundamentally our, our land believes that you can have multiple opinions and still have a conversation, uh, okay. it's not possible for us to move towards so, a plutocracy. Yes, the, the lady been, here in the, if in the that were row. true, sir, If that were true, you would not have been seeing that there is a separate, different government here in Karnataka okay. and a different government in the center. All right, let, we let, have a let, vibrant yeah, let, democracy. Let, let, let Let's the, not let be told by anybody question, about yeah. that. And then followed by the young man Behind her, yeah. Good evening, my name is Tabitha Anslan. So my question is to the spokesperson BJP. Uh, before the question, I'll just answer one. Th uh, I'll just tell one thing. The former Chief Justice of India, T. S. Thakur, and the seven judges Constitution bench had stated that the Constitution forbids state from mixing religion with politics. So my question is, the recent. Uh, uh, event which happened in Praparishta, done in Ayodhya Ram uh, Mandir, seems to be in political stunt by BJP government. Is it in political stunt by the BJP government because the election is nearing? Don't mix state and, uh, state and religion. So, religion and state, yeah. I, I like your question a lot. Tomorrow is Ram Navmi, so some, in some ways very beautifully placed for tomorrow. Um, these ideals of let's not mix church and state, I'm not in contempt of the court proceedings, but what happens also is that the Hindu temples here in southern India especially, their revenue goes to the government, whereas no other institutions' revenue goes to the government. Is this something you were aware of? Uh, I forgot your name. Could you repeat it, please? Namita? Tabitha. Tabitha. Yeah. Is this something you were aware of, Tabitha? This institution that we are sitting in here today uh, was granted permission to have uh, no sort of rules and restrictions in the way it functions because it was a minority-led institution. Now, am I saying that everybody needs to be taxed equally or everybody uh, needs to not be sort of treated equally? This is the same with the uni Uniform Civil Code as well, right? We have different civil codes for different religious uh, uh, groups. Okay. If church and so state, may I please, if religious I'm in politics, if well, yeah. government and politics were not to be separated, our only ask is Zaka, that that doesn't happen lie. anywhere. Okay. That does not happen across Zaka, different religions. Lie. Please what? don't interrupt me, ma'am. The question was to me and I will answer Zaka, it. That's a lie. What? One second, one second, please. Uh, you know, making jokes about important issues are not to be tolerated. That's Zaka, I'd like you to come in, please. Yeah, yeah I also have to wrap up in a minute. So finish I hope your I point, answered please. your question, Tabitha. Otherwise, okay. we can speak after. All right. Uh, I, I want to get a final question from the, uh, the, the young man there in the white shirt. Yeah, go ahead. Last question and we're wrapping up after that. Quickly, please. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Myself, Stephen. Uh, so my question is, uh, during pandemic 2021 May, so a Gujarat pharma company called Z Zydus Cadilla comes up with a medicine called uh, Remidesiva. So this medicine was distributed among the country, saying it is a curation for a cure for uh, COVID-19. So when it started uh, spreading around the states, symptoms came out. It was uh, ineffective treat to COVID, and when the investigators started, uh, World Health Organization has already banned this uh, medicine, but the Modi government neglects this and says to manufacture more and more medicine of, of this and distribute among the country. Okay, uh, and, quick, uh, quick response. Let, let, yeah, wait, I, I have to wrap on, up also, yeah. Later on, the investigation says that the pharma company uh, gave 18 crores to BJP government and 3 crores to Congress government okay. and uh, overall 9 All right, got, got your point young man. Let, uh, let her respond and then I'm going to wrap up after that quickly please. Yeah. The 
pandemic was probably one of the events in the last 100 years that was the most unexpected, most unpredictable, and uh, any government in power would have had to take extraordinary sort of action, caution, in order to uh, work with the situation, both from people's health perspective as well as an economic perspective. Many of us here have lost people in this pandemic. What decisions were made? There are multiple allegations on the vaccine being effective, not effective. You would have seen people who are anti-vaxxers, not anti-vaxxers. On this particular drug, I don't wish to comment because I think that okay. uh, it's beyond my but, realm of yeah, understanding. Final word, I have there to wrap up. Research, I, I, I what, again, I come May back I? to this. Uh, what, this election for the, for the young audience here, many of them are first time voters. Why should they vote for you and not uh, the party that is saying that it's going to have a vision for the next 25 years, make give, Vixit Bharat and develop India and so on? One simple, like literally 30 seconds. The Mudra Act basically enables temples, their revenue to be collected, and it's redistributed 100% to all the temples. Go check it out or I'll send you the links to that because don't allow a lie to perpetuate, right? Second thing, for a government that talks about development so much, and Achidin and Vikas and Amritkal, the consecration of a temple has become the cornerstone of their entire election plank. The Karnataka Congress here basically basically said we will bring in guarantees, even though we had the detractors. Within the first meeting of the cabinet, we have implemented it. There are five crore beneficiaries in the state. The poorest of the poor okay. are protected. Follow and vote so for I, a party that talks, I, walks the talk, not just okay, all ten, talk. Ten seconds. Why should, why, should, talk. why should the young voters vote, vote for the BJP? Absolutely. Uh, Amrit Kal is about to be upon us. And what Amrit Kal does is that anything that we do, there's going to be a multiplier effect. The Narendra Modi government has laid the economic foundation. Foundation. We are a global power to reckon with. From fragile five to top uh, three economy, we are getting there. We are going to be a okay. trillion plus economy. I did not. I did not finish. I, 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 I have to finish. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have limited time. But thank you very much to this lovely panel of guests and also this lovely audience. The great part about coming to Bengaluru and doing a show is we can always have a healthy conversation, differences of opinion. But we will end on a nice note. So thank you very much. Can we have a round of applause to the lovely audience and the panelists here? If you'd been tuned in to CNN News 18 and the special show, Elections on the Road, from me, Zaka Jacob, and the rest of the CNN News 18 team, thank you very much for your time. Good night. An unprecedented and historic election. A vote that decides Bharat's quest for greatness. A mandate that paves the way for a billion aspirations. A verdict the world is watching closely. A battle for a rising Bharat's glorious future. Battle for Bharat. Elections equals CNN News 18. Election fever is gripping Tamil Nadu. Maharashtra is going to polls in five phases. Crowds are building for the Prime Minister's rally. The Congress is hoping this time it can snap some seats from the BJP. Corruption, Hindutva and Vikas remain the core pitch for the BJP. Factors of this election will be the return of statehood. The guarantees of Prime Minister Narendra Modi is resonating with people. Amid this controversy, we are seeing that Rahul Gandhi has arrived at Vainat. Co-presented by Viewers, what a Hello, Namaskar. This is First Post and you're watching Vantage with me, Palki Sharma.
Iran is flexing its military muscle, it's issuing threats to Israel and warning the Western powers that uh, Israel may be trying to, uh, to trap them. Israel is still figuring out its next response, trying to build diplomatic pressure as their divided war cabinet cancels a meeting for the second time in two days. And their prime minister continues to lose popularity and public confidence.